Alrighty, I made this rug about five, eight years ago, something in the between there, somewhere in there. And I want to see if I can't make another one and all. Uh, so, let's see what we can do about getting started. I want to use black and red so what I want to do first is get this dust off the table my cat's been up here I want to cut this down oh, I got three pieces here All right. uh, let's see what we can do I want to make sure I get the longer edge, <clears throat> which is not going to matter. <clears throat> so, let's see what we can do about doing this, cutting them down. Uh, let's not do it that way. this way Now it does not have to be extremely straight. So uh, we want to make sure that we cut it down. But I am going to straighten this one out. Uh, let me see if I can get over here. Now, what I want to do is put a, a bunch of them in, in a bucket. Where am I now? This is the head of the Stamp River. And uh, it's not the warmest water yet. So uh, the word has it on the street is I've had numerous people, I mean numerous people have emailed in and said, uh, if you want proof, you want to experience, all you got to do is walk the Stamp River. There you go. So here we are. We're at the head of the Stamp River. There's a major Robinson Creek fish hatchery. It's just over there somewhere. Nobody's around here at all. Have I ever been here? No. Here we go. It's a good place to get some voices heard, right? This title, Not Seen, But an Encounter Still plus someone else's story. Hi, Steve. It's Bob again. Yes, can you use my name? Thanks for all you do. You make others who get called crazy feel sane. You give us a safe place to tell our stories. My cousin and her husband watch your videos. They call you the indigenous man because you're always asking First Nations people to tell the stories. She heard you read my email and thought it was cool. I asked her if she thought I was crazy, and she said that she didn't because she knows what I can do. She has seen and heard many things around me. I've given her answers to questions before she asks it. Asks it. I used to channel her son after he passed. Once the world Rutabaga, once the word Rutabaga got stuck in my head before I went to have lunch with her. When I told her about it, she told me that she had said that if I was for real, I should say the word Rutabaga that day. We still laugh about that. That's interesting. In my last email, I told you of some of the messages 
one of the Sabi wanted passed on. I did not tell you of the most recent encounter in that last email. A few years ago, I was walking on ATV trail near Provincial Park in BC. Even though I was walking into an area where there were no houses and no electricity, I felt as if I was standing next to a, next to a transformer. I told you before that I could hear electricity. For me, it's a constant buzz, and I love going away from homes and people to give my ears and mind a break from it. This particular way, day, I could hear the electricity the whole time. I knew I was being followed before I stepped over the tree that lay across the path. When I stepped over the tree, I thought about your channel and the encounters where people had stepped over the blockage on the path. I took a deep breath and continued on, thinking it was my friend. When I said a silent hello to her, she told me it wasn't her. I came to a young tree that had made an arc along the path. It looked interesting to me, so I stopped to take a picture of my phone. In my mind, I heard a voice tell me not to take a picture of him. Um, it reminded me of a small child, say around five or so. I don't know why I got that impression, but still, it was what I thought. He was curious about me. I continued to follow my path and enjoy nature. I love the smell of cedar trees. As I was coming to a bend in the trail, I had that feeling that danger lay ahead. I got the distinct feeling that I shouldn't go any further. Since I'd had this feeling before and found out later that there was a rattlesnake on the trail, I would have stepped on. I just chalked it up to something like that. I said aloud, I mean no harm, and I'm just enjoying nature. The child's voice said that it was his dad around the bend, and he didn't trust humans. He told me that not all of them are kind. I repeated that I mean no harm. I heard a distinct adult male voice in my head telling me it's okay for me to continue as long as I meant no harm. I got the feeling that I would actually see him if I did walk around the corner. I said aloud, we'd meet another day. I turned around and walked back to my car. I looked at my watch. I'd been on the trail for over an hour, yet it took me only five or so minutes to get back to my car. I didn't walk any faster out of there, and I did than I did into the forest. The next story wasn't my encounter, but it was about an encounter. I used to run a fishing supply store in a small town. One day a man came in. He looked deathly pale. He didn't look around at anything I had in the store. He waited for the customers to leave. And then he asked if anyone had seen anything strange in the area where I had had my encounter. This is about two years before I was on this trail. I asked him what he meant. He told me that he and his dog were walking one of the trails and saw a brown animal walk between two trees and disappear. I asked if it was a bear. He said that unless a bear walks on two legs and can disappear behind a tree that's only six inches around, it wasn't a bear. I said very nonchalantly, oh, maybe it's a Sasquatch. He seemed relaxed. And he said, that's what I thought. I just didn't know they could disappear into thin air. Alrighty. <laughs> Mama Cat is over here. I'm going to finish that in maybe tomorrow. But we're going to go ahead and start on this. I want to get this started. I've been wanting to make one of these. Alright, I'm going to line these up. Ah, here we go. Alright, now I want to take the tip of this and I want to sew all three of these together. Let's see. Let me line it up better. Or what do we line it up better? Better, better, better. That'll have to work. Uh, come on. I've been doing this all month long. I want to make sure. There we go. Alright. So now I'm going to make some stitches down through here. The girl that I watched, she used a sewing machine. But I don't. I'd have to clean up a whole big old mess in there. And I don't want to do that. Unless I'm planning on doing some uh, 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 sewing on the sewing machine. Other than that, I'm not going to worry about it. Alright. Now, where am I going to put this at? Stick it, Mama Cat's butt. Alright, we'll stick it there. Alright, now I have this. 
Now I want to take some tape and I want to try to find the front of it. Oh, come on. There it is. Baby. I'm going to go all the way up where I sewed it at, and I'm going to tape it down. Alright, now, what I want to do is I want to go with uh, the uh, length of my mat here, and we're going to uh, braid it all the way down. And we want to do it loosely. He told me to walk between two small trees in a little clearing. When it reached the second tree, it disappeared behind it. Color returned to his face, and he walked out without another word. Keep up the good work getting these stories out. I've been told that 2025 is going to be an important year for us. For us all. Let's hope the truth comes up before that. Sincerely, Barb Hendrickson. Barb, appreciate you. Absolutely appreciate that share. And I'm glad you came forward to those uh, what's normally considered an alarming, alarming details, right? A little tired of people not sharing all the details. I don't think there's any fish in here yet. There's probably some summer on steelheads and trout, but uh, those big spring salmon will be coming up at the end of the month. September long, long weekend, rain permitting, I think. Nothing's chucking any rocks at me, and I hope it doesn't happen. Now I want to layer this back down. It's not going to matter if it's uh, what the way it is. I'm not going to worry about the color. I wish it was had color on both sides, but since it don't, I'm not going to worry about the color. Now, I want to sew the bottom of it. Alright. There's another one. Why did I share my experience? This is the title of this one. Wherever you are when you read this, Steve, I pray an angel to you for protection and to heighten your senses. There were three reasons why I needed to share my experiences. First, I wanted to bring hope to anyone struggling by saying the truth that... The living Father and Jesus are real. Second, I was helping by sharing my experiences that helped someone and stopped the vivid dreams I was having. We are done with this. All right. So, now then, I, I'm going to take this one up and put it down here. Uh, let's see, I probably ought to go up with it. Let's do it like that. Like that right there. Alright. Now, we have this type. Or this type. And we have pins. And I have this type, and I'm not for sure which one will go through. I'm going to see if these won't first, so that uh, I won't have to open these. But if I have to, I will. So, a safety pin will work just as good. Now, what I want to do is I want to take one black one. <coughs> And I want to go right here at the top and make a slit right here. Well, maybe. 
if I can. I may have to get a smaller pair so I can get it down in there. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put a slit in it. And I'm going to put it right here. Yeah, so I think I did six with the other one. But I'm going to do four this time. So I'm going to make sure that I do that. Alright, now we got four. Alright, let's get our needles out here. <clears throat> And we're gonna to want to put one on every and on every one. I'm hoping I can get it on here. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna to have to have a bigger eye. So these are too small. All right. So let's go on to something bigger. Let's try these out. See how they work. If I can open it. It worked for me only I only had one dream of them since I shared. Then with my last experience with the giant wolf of our trap line I was hoping someone could help me because I'm still trying to understand how or why they would warn me about the wolf before it happened. I'm searching. I just went through a bunch of testing with the Glen Rose, with the Glen Rose Hospital in the Edmonton area. They did an MRA, MRI of my brain as well. I did this all myself. No one made me. I can say this for sure, Steve. Since I found your channel and was able to finally get everything out, and my life has improved and continues to improve for this, I'm very thankful. Barry Allen Ferguson. Very good news. I can't remember your original email. I'm sure I could probably, probably dig it up, though. But that's good news, man. Good news. Hey, listen, I'm going to move you guys. The sun's driving me nuts. Let's see if I can sign, find somewhere else cool for us to go see. Oh. All right. Exposure's kind of darkened up, but oh well. At least you got that river behind me, which I think is pretty cool. I'm way down the bottom of Sumas River now. Up where I was earlier... I went bombing around and there just wasn't any wasn't any more access to the river there. <clears throat> it's just sun beating down and uh, nowhere with a cool view. Finally, I got done with that. Those little eyes are too small, but these are just right. So what we want to do is lay them out this away we want one uh we want to lay them out in the collar we got black red black red all right so we're going to take the last one we want to go uh, let's see under over under one kind of pull it down we don't want it real real tight i gotta get rid of that that's gonna be in my way so we're gonna take this one by my needle and we're gonna want to go in the first one here pull it through all the way we don't want it really tight but we do want it kind of tight and kind of straighten it up to where it will be right. All right, so now we have red, red, and that's supposed to be black. There we go. Red and black. We're going to take the next one. We're going to go under, over, under all right let's see oh, come on don't do that 
get it down in there. Well, we don't want it real tight, but we do want it kind of tight. All right, then we're going to want to go through the next one. Let's see, we went through that one. I want to go through that one. There we go. Under, over, under, and go into the next one. It's part of the reason why it frustrates me being here in a way. Some of the, the mountain places I used to go to at Minnes, right? I will again, just not right now. Anyways, let's carry on with hearing some voices, all right? Unheard emails, and I think he walked right past a sabbe about 20 feet to your left. Why does that not surprise me? Steve, hey, my friend, I was recently watching your This Is How I Start Hunting video 2022. I know you said you really don't care about those closed calls, but I just wanted to keep you informed since you will most likely be going back to retrieve those cameras. All right, that'll be this spring when I was way up north. At timestamp 905 to 909, you'll notice a fallen tree off to your left. At the root fall of the tree, it appears that a sabe is crouching down behind it and watching you pass. The conical head is what sold me on it. And then in frame 908, it looked as though you could make out the face. All right, so what, that is a video called, This Is How I Start Hunting Video 2022. It's probably in the out of channel, I'm guessing, right? I'll check it out when I get home, man. Not that I really want to see that. I love your channel and have much respect for what you do. I've learned so much about the outdoors and have now recalled at least five experiences of my own that listening to others on your channel has allowed me to make sense of. I emailed you twice last year, but I think they were never read because I've really tried to listen to every video you post. One was titled, A Mother's Day I'll Never Forget. Then I sent another one about an experience at Cooper Lake in East Texas. I know how things can get lost in the shuffle, but the one experience from the lake, I was really curious if any other viewers had any experience. To my knowledge, I have not heard of a savvy being in a bush, being in a bush over the water. I sent my stories in February 21 and again in April, May, with another story. I think Cooper Lake was the later story I sent to you in April or May of 2021. If you get a chance to check it, great. If not, I completely understand. Keep doing what you do, brother, and be safe out there. Brian Reeves, Huntsville, Alabama. Please feel, easy, feel, you, you, feel, please feel free to use my name and my location. It's got you, Brian. Thanks, man. This is what I'm going to do right now. In my notes, I'm going to go to the very top of the list and write down your name. Dash search it. There we go. All right. Got you on the top of the list to search once to get back. I'll find it. Now. <clears throat> Interesting photos. I want to share these interesting photos that I took while on a hike in Northern California. I wear a size 12 shoe for reference. I know it's not much, but I did find it interesting that there is an, that there is an imprint of what looks like a foot in solid rock. It's pretty neat. All right. Let me see if this will work out here. I don't know. That's some friendly people in Hudson Hope. Haul me home and show me a rock they had of a handprint in it. And some universities wanted to buy it off them and they refused to sell it. That is definitely a footprint looking mark, isn't it? Thanks for the share, man. All right, here comes another one. Sasquatch, a Boy Scout, freak out, camp out. Hey, Steve, hope you're doing well. You have my permission to read this verbatim, including my name and information. I'm at the age where I don't give a shit what people think of me anymore. Funny how age is a tendency to do that to us, LOL. <laughs> no doubt, especially with the shit show going on today. Quickly before I get to my story, I just want to give a little background on my efforts to research Bigfoot, Sasquatch, forest giants, etc. online over the past five or so years. 
I've watched the TV shows, including the one with the guy named Bobo, and realized that those guys have no clue how to find their own ass with both hands, much less a Bigfoot. They should rename that show to Finding Bullshit. <laughs> I have sorted through countless hours of video evidence on YouTube, as well as other sources. I went as far as publishing my encounter on that BSRO website, but to no avail. I never received a response, and they never posted my sighting in their database. That was two years ago, so those guys are useless. I was, however, fortunate enough to find a guy that films forest giants in daylight. I was out in the southern Florida swamps on a regular basis. This is 2015. This guy's a real deal. I also found another guy to analyze audio and video clips from the internet to either verify or debunk them. And does so from a neutral and unbiased perspective. And last but not least, you with your no bullshit approach to people's encounters and a pulpit from which people can tell their stories to the masses who may also find the courage to share and who actually care enough to listen and believe. I'm very grateful that you've had the balls to put yourself out there and start this channel slash community on my story. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate it. My name is Mike Hurst. I'm 50 years old and I grew up in a small suburban town called Deer Park, Texas. It is located on the southeast side of Houston, Texas. It was the summer of 85 and I was 13 years old at the time. I took a road trip from my Boy Scouts of America troop to Enchanted Rock State Park in Central Texas to camp out and rappel down some cliffs for the weekend. Alrighty, I figured I'd get you a little bit closer. Hopefully. Alright, see how this right here is way loose? We're going to fix that. So I'm going to cut this off and try to see if I can't get this right here tighter because we have to have it a little bit tighter for it to work. I think it's where I had to take and pull these right here and loosen everything up is the reason why it's like that. But we can do it. Alright, there that is. So let's see if I can kind of like, uh, well, there we go. So if we can't work this out and make it work. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I know it's tied. It's too early in the morning and I can't see that good. do it again but oh, wait a minute I uh, there we go now I want to make sure everything is flat and we're going to continue on. Oh man, this is still loose right in here. I should straighten that out first. If I'd have done it last night, it'd have been alright. Alright, but we're going to go on. Let's get this next one. Okay. Let's work on this one first because I want it longer. 
So what we're going to do is turn it up, give it a cut, or I guess another strip, give it a cut, and what we're going to do so we can keep the colors going the same identical way, we're going to go backwards with it. <coughs> and then go in there. There we go. And now we're going to put The first day we were there, after setting up camp, we went rappelling off of a 300-foot cliff face made of solid granite and hiked through some natural caverns. Near the end of the day, while walking back to camp, we noticed a couple of nature trails just off the main park road. We asked if we could hike the trails, but the scoutmaster told us that we weren't going to have time to explore those trails on this trip. The second night we were there, four of us had decided to sneak out and explore those trails after the scoutmaster went to sleep. Around 2 a.m., we rallied on the road outside of camp. We headed out and began walking to the trails. We followed the park main road, which stretched around the outskirts of the park to the nature trails. We had a couple of flashlights between us. The road we were on was about 14 feet wide, made of asphalt. There was a full moon that night, so we could see fairly well once we got away from the camp lights and our eyes adjusted to the darkness. We were walking shoulder to shoulder down this road, just shooting the shit and joking around as young boys do. About 15 minutes or so after we left camp and before we could reach the trails, we were suddenly startled by rustling and movement from the brush on top of the hill to our left. We saw three deer crash in the bushes and run down the hill and scurry frantically across the road about 40 feet in front of us from left to right. We heard louder popping and cracking noises and crashing sounds on top of that same hill to the left. We all froze in place. A sense of dread came over me, and the hairs of my met on my neck stood on end. At that moment, a dark figure broke through the brush line, sprinted down the hill, and appeared to be chasing the deer. Across the road in front of us in one stride like it was nothing. It was running on two feet. But after crossing the road, it crouched down on all fours and seemed to gain more speed when it did. Just before it disappeared into the brush, to our right. It had to be at least nine feet tall in its upper torso area, I estimate to be four to five feet across the shoulders. It also had a very short neck that appeared to be sunken into its shoulders and massive muscles could be seen through the thin dark body hair which was shimmering in the direct moonlight. Its muscular build and definition were impressive to say the least and would make any bodybuilder jealous. His head was massive and conical at the top. I already guess I would say it had to weigh about 800 pounds or more. So, a decent sized bull moose size. A few seconds later, it passed in front of us. We all noticed an ungodly pungent smell, like a combination of feces, urine, and garbage. I had smelled at the garbage dump in the past. We all panicked and sprinted full speed back toward camp, constantly checking up our shoulders to see if maybe it had decided to follow us. We all stopped just short of camp to gain our composure, catch our breath, and discuss what we had just witnessed. We all agreed not to tell anybody for fear of getting in trouble, for sneaking out, or that nobody would believe us and accuse us of making up the story for attention. We broke camp, we broke camp about 8 a.m. that morning and headed home. We never talked about it again and lost touch with each other shortly after the incident. Right on cue. I've only told a couple people about this incident over the years for fear of being ridiculed. As I mentioned before, I finally don't give a shit what people think of me anymore, but I'm very appreciative for you and your channel because I know that my experience will not fall on deaf ears. Excuse me. No, it won't. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I bottled up those memories for too long. I really and truly enjoy your channel and hearing other stories who have had similar experiences. When it comes to encountering forest giants, you just don't know until you know. Once you do know, then what? LOL.
No shit. Any encounter with one of these forest giants will change a person forever. God bless and keep on keeping on, brother. Sincerely, Mike Hurst. Got you, man. Got you back. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club. You have to make one of those damn t-shirts saying that, right? Welcome to the club. Uh, all right, so chances are by now, this stage of the game, some of the people that are with you are watching this channel. And if you are, uh, obviously it's a safe place to share your shit. All right, so do it. Don't be a pussy. Share your shit. You're in a safe place. And everybody's got your back here, all right? Everybody's got your back. The moment you do not care what any human being thinks is the moment your life starts. And that is a fact, all right? Don't be scared. Switch back trailhead part two, questions answered. Steve, part two, my questions answered. I wrote about our encounter last summer in the Olympic National Forest a little bit ago and how we were pushed out of our camp area. Well, I went back to that lake area last month. I wanted to understand the dynamics of what I'd call a family of forest people and why we were pushed out. I understand the area was probably home for them. We were intruding and that would have annoyed me if strangers settled in my front yard. The way we were pushed down the mountain stuck with me. It was deliberate, well-organized, non-violent in any way. My friends thought about all the little things they remember, each writing it down. Odd thing was that nobody remembered the same actions, i.e., one heard one thing while the other didn't. <clears throat> Alright, we're here at the end of it. We're going to put two in this one and two in this one. Been there. As I packed my camping gear, my thoughts were on how was that possible? How could we all share the same space in the woods yet not experience the same thing? I arrived at the trailhead early on on Friday. I had planned on a one night stay since the weather was not favorable for two nights. I expected these creatures to recognize me right away since I wore the same clothes, hat and backpack I had when we were there last. 30 minutes into the hike to the lake, the forest was quiet. Birds were singing. Two black-tailed deer walked across the trail ahead of me, but no other creature came across my eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Settling the campsite near the lake edge, I built a fire, put up my tent, took out my frying pan, and made dinner. All of a sudden, at the north end of the lake, what must have been a good-sized rock splashed the water some 30 yards from me. I'll admit, my body almost sucked up into a little mush ball. For a second, I couldn't think. I stood up and looked at the tree line for anyone or anything that threw that rock. Nothing. I didn't see a thing. As daylight faded, I stoked the fire, bringing it to a roar. It was at that moment I saw four sets of eyes peering at me from the tree line across the lake. Two sets were red, about nine to eight feet off the ground. One set was blue-green, about seven foot high. And the last set was yellow, only about four feet off the ground. I could hear walking. A few branches breaking, but not more but not much more. I stood up, greeted them openly, asking if they remembered me. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I remember how you said, I tell them I hear, I'm here to hunt and leave me alone as I'll leave you alone. I thought, what the hell, I'll try that. I said, I'm here to camp overnight because I wanted to see you. Feeling a bit freaked, a little crazy. I looked down at the fire for a second, looked back up and they're all gone. I'm laying there at 11.30 at night. Hold on. I'm laying there at 11.30 at night, head spinning with thoughts of busting out of there when I was overcome with an overwhelming feeling of peace. My head spin was replaced with a thought of family and peace. I fell asleep soon after. I woke at almost 8 a.m., fully rested. There was enough fire to restore with the last of the dry wood I collected. Ate breakfast, packed and headed down the trail to my SUV. As I looked across the lake, it was clear this was home to them. I was followed down the mountain, but this time no growling, screaming, or rock throwing. It felt like it was an escort and not a push out. At the SUV, I did manage to see the big male, I assume, shadowed. He was about 12 feet tall and 25 yards into the wind. As we stared at each other for a few seconds, it simply vanished. 
Again, another person. I guess I was lucky I'd piss them off. I felt like I was okay to be there, and then they didn't seem to mind either. This answered every question I had. Speaking for myself, I understand they're yet another creature trying to live in peace. Hope this helps, helps answer questions, Steve. Sincerely, Thomas. It's going to help answer questions for somebody, Thomas, without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's always good to hear the more uh, not-so-stressful experiences, right? <laughs>